Second. Roll call vote, please. I'm sorry, who second? Ms. Pike Carroll. Okay. Mr. Miller. Mr. Vicaro. Yes. Mr. Barron. Yes. Ms. Baumeister. Yes. Ms. Brush. Yes. Mr. Four. Yes. Mr. Bates. Yes. All right, Mr. Chairman, um, based on our discussion in um, private executive session because of the threatened litigation, uh, the letter I received from Mr. Leodori who introduced himself to you earlier, which I only got late this afternoon. Um, it's my recommendation that because of the threat of litigation and because of the lateness of the notice of threat of litigation, so as not to give this board or its attorney an opportunity to review what I consider to be a threat without much law to back it up, we are going to, it's my recommendation that this matter be carried until our June 6th meeting without further public notice. We need a motion, a second, and a roll call vote. Need a motion? Need a second? Second. Who made the motion? A jump. Can I get a roll call vote, please? Ms. Brush? Yes. Mr. Bates? <coughs> Mr. Barron? Yes. Ms. Baumeister? Yes. Mr. Four? Yes. Ms. Vicaro? Yes. Mr. Miller? Thank you. Okay. Um, just so everybody knows, this matter will be. <coughs> on our agenda for our regular meeting of June the 6th at 7 p.m. in this office, in this room. There'll be no further public notice. And um, with that, since that this was the only matter of business on the agenda this evening, Mr. Chairman, you may ask for a motion to adjourn. We need a motion for adjournment. No, and let me explain why, okay? Because your attorney, Mr. Leodori, threatened litigation against this board and these volunteers who are personal uh, and seeking to sue them personally. These people are volunteers. They're not paid to be here. And I get that letter late this afternoon. I was at a family graduation. I didn't see it until I got home tonight at 6 o'clock. So no, there will be no public comment. There will be no hearing. And we will decide on June the 6th whether we're going to go forward or not. Now in the meantime, Mr. Leodori, since you threatened the lawsuit, I would advise you, not advise you, I would urge you, if you're really going to file a lawsuit, why don't you file a lawsuit trying to get an injunction against the June 6th meeting? That's, and I'm, I don't want a reply to that, Mr. Leodori. Well, Mr. Listen, I'm going to give you a reply. First of all, I, as you know, this is off the record. Okay, that's okay. I mean, again. We, Just we, so we, know, we, we, clarify we have a pending motion to adjourn. I answered a member of the public. They got their answer. Roll call vote on the motion to adjourn. We need a roll call vote. Yes. 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 Ladies and gentlemen. Yes. 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 As you know, Ms. Brush? Yes. Mr. Four? Yes. Mr. Vicaro? Yes. Mr. Miller? Yes. Mr. Bates? Yes. Adjourned. Ladies and gentlemen, yes. 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 put my stay a few minutes and I'd like to address you all. Okay. Right. Well, first and foremost, I want to thank everybody for coming here tonight. I know it's uh, kind of a hardship coming on a Friday, but I, I think it shows your dedication and your uh, concern for your community and I think you are all here for the right reasons and for many different reasons and uh, the crux of my letter just so you understand it was uh, a letter that I sent to uh, a lot of different agency Manchester Township Planning Board it went to the Manchester Township Clerk it went to the DEP Commissioner it went to the Attorney General's office it went to the Executive Director of the Pinelands Commission and it went to the uh, Secretary of the Department of the Interior. And the reason I did that is because there's something called the Environmental Rights Act. Yes. The Environmental Rights Act is a government body is not going to enforce government environmental regulations, rules, and statutes. 
then the uh, people of the state of New Jersey, if they invoke it, they then have the right to enforce. And the reason that I wrote this letter was there is a federal court order that was entered uh, several years ago on September 5th, 2003. Yes. And that's critical because it seems that everybody in Manchester has forgotten about that except you folks. Right. And the critical components of that are the developers of the Heritage Minerals site um, signed on to that court order. It's, a, it's called a consent order. And it's this that has a lot of goodies in it. And I'll just give you some of the highlights. The highlights are that pursuant to this, the developers agreed that they would only develop 995 acres. They are now proposing to uh, disturb more than 1,900 acres. They're almost doubling it. The, uh, the, the order said that they would deed restrict, environmentally restrict, 6,092 acres. They are now claiming that they're only going to deed restrict 4,986 acres. They claim that they were going to only develop 2,450 dwelling units. Now they're looking for 6,543 units. They, they claimed and they consented to and they agreed that they would only develop 20,000 square feet of commercial space. Now they're looking to uh, claim 1,530,000 square feet of industrial and commercial rent. That's a lot. They also committed to protect um, three endangered species. There's nothing about that now. And so I believe it's quite logical that if you have a federal court order that a local planning board cannot preempt that, That's right. especially when the application is being made by apparently uh, experts in the field, and no one's, no one's talked about this. And so I think that's why you're here. I'd ask you all to come back. I'd ask you all to bring a friend. I think you have to make this very clear. Now, the financial consequences, since we only have 10 minutes, I can talk an hour, but I want to, the, the officers have been very patient, and um, I do want to mention this because uh, I have the privilege of representing many senior communities in this area, in this town, and other towns in the surrounding area. And this project is called for basically 20 years. So I know when seniors hear about taxes going up, that's bad enough. But the reality of what they're going to do is there's going to be higher and higher taxes that you're going to pay for, and you will never see the benefit of those taxes. So you should get everybody in the Manchester Coalition, anybody who you can, bring them to this June 6 meeting. Because I, I did, uh, detect a little hostility. Why wouldn't you have a public notice of that? And that's apparently punishing. And I'm flattered that Mr. Liston suggested that I represent you all. I represent you all in spirit, but legally I only represent the Pinelands Preservation Alliance. So thank you all for coming. I hope and look forward to seeing you on, on D-Day, June 6th. <laughs> Teresa Lettman from the Pinelands Preservation Alliance after a heated meeting here at the Manchester Township Planning Board. Teresa, can you tell us what happened here tonight? Um, yes, um, we, I arrived early and I set up my video camera. Um, we have set up, we sent out flyers telling Manchester residents about this meeting and a lot of the residents called and said they don't have transportation, they didn't have a car, they're older so they don't drive now, and they couldn't make it to the meeting. So I brought my camera to set up and I told them that I would be videotaping it and then I would put it up on YouTube. When I got here tonight, when the meeting started, the police officer came over and instructed me that it was up to the planning board whether or not I could be there with my video camera and that they wanted me to shut it off or I would be asked to leave. I refused. Um, after he again said it several times, um, then he said that um, he was going to re physically remove me. And I told him very nicely that if he gave it to me in writing where there's an ordinance or something from the township that indicated that I had to go for a permit before coming into this meeting with a camera, that I'd be more than happy to comply with it. They could not produce the um, 
uh, anything in writing. They tried. Um, Liston then decided to, rather than to remove me, to start the meeting and to go into executive session. Um, after they went into executive session, the police officer came back and told me that they were not able to find anything in writing and that before the June 5th meeting, I needed to request if I was going to bring in the video camera. So we'll take it up at the next meeting, but... And, and if you could just tell us, for everybody back home, with this Hobson's project, what are some of the concerns your organization and others have with its impact to the environment, to Manchester? If you could just give us a summary of that. Summary, huh? You're talking about many years. There was ongoing litigation back in 1995. Havnanian wanted to put um, some 3,000, 4,000 homes on the site. They went in for CAFR permits. The CAFR permits under the CAFR rules were denied. They were denied for various reasons, for wetlands protection, for t and &E species. Several years there was lit ongoing litigation. There was a settlement agreement that was signed in 2003. And this settlement agreement put in place those rules and regulations that apply to the CAFR overlap area, which is in the Pinelands Federal designation of the National Reserve, but under the jurisdiction of DEP land use. They put protections in place. There were many meetings. They looked at the, th the threatened and endangered species. They looked at the water. They looked at stormwater. They looked at impervious coverage. The, it was the decision to only develop on 900 acres and the remaining 6,400 acres would be preserved. Now they're coming in with a proposal. They want to develop with 6,450 homes on 1,900 acres. And they want access through the threatened and endangered species habitat. 